Hey guys and gals, this is Nathan. Welcome back to another episode of Combat Coloring 101. This is episode 15, and we're just kind of continuing on with uh, weather type effects. And last week we did lightning, and this week we're going to do um, rain. And this is supposed to be uploaded on last Friday, but I had a kind of technical issue, so I wasn't able to get it up on time. But I figured better late than never, right? Um, you see, here's the original image that I had colored, uh, artist by uh, Chris Craney and Doug Stevens uh, of The Haunt, and I'll put the link to their descriptions and the, uh, the link to their DeviantArt portfolios, their accounts, into the descriptions. That's what I'll do. And um, yeah, so that was the original version, what I did uh, for this newer version, just to kind of show like more stormy weather. I kept the same colors back here. Uh, got rid of the got rid of the moon, uh, you know, little stormy clouds and and whatnot going in here, and just kind of make it a little bit more moody. Um, so I just wanted to show you that ahead of time uh, before we we put the rain in there. Uh, but I have a blank canvas. Um, let me see what size is this. this is eight by ten, uh, 150 DPI. I could probably, let me bump that up to 300, uh, so we can use it for like print and whatnot. Um, you know, again, it's one of those things where let's do it once and we'll save it and we can reuse it over and over again. So we're going to open up a new layer right here, or you can hit this little guy, a little folded corner on the paper down here. That'll give you a new layer as well. Um, just hit D so you have your default colors and fill it with a, uh, fill it with black. And next, we're going to go to our Photoshop menu at the top of the screen. Um, fortunately, mine's on the other screen, so you can't see it. Um, but if you go to your filters, then under Noise, hit Add Noise. And let me bring this over so you can check out the options. Usually, um, you know, usually around this ballpark, usually works pretty good for rain. You know, let's say 24. Um, you know, depending on how much rain you want, you would increase it or decrease it. And don't have it on a uniform, have, you on, have it on the Gaussian and monochromatic because you don't want all these different colors in there. You just want the black and white that are our foreground and background colors. Uh, so we'll hit OK. And this is where it's going to get a little bit uh, experimental here. Uh, let's go back to our image. And we see him. Uh, he's taking up, you know, this area. We see the, uh, let me get a new layer on top here. Oops. Oops. Was that? Oh, that's the rain that I put in. I have a channel here that saved it that I'll use later on. Um, just want to make sure that was there. For the composition, which is great on this piece, you know, we see the haunt. Why is that not increasing? Oh, wrong button. Uh, you know, taking up this area right here so it wouldn't really work if we just had like the rain coming straight down or continuing this part so we have all this open sky so we're gonna have the rain coming from this direction and that'll help uh, tell the story and and uh, look a lot more interesting so keeping that angle in mind we're gonna go back to our rain canvas here and we're gonna go to Let's see, up to uh, the filter menu again, go blur and then motion blur. And you can see here, you can move it. If I wanted the rain, you know, to come down this other way, I'd go this way. But, you know, we want it about, you know, 65 degrees looks nice. Uh, we can always adjust it after as well. Uh, so let's hit OK. Oops, let me, let me go back to that real quick. Let me undo that. So I want to talk about those other settings. Uh, let me see, motion blur, that's what it was. And the distance, I just kind of want to go for 43 pixels right now. Let's see how that looks. And with this, it does take a little bit of uh, experimentation. Uh, might, it's because it's all randomly generated. You don't know what you're going to get each time, so you kind of want to mess with it a little bit. And you can't really see it, but let's hit, uh, let's pull up our levels. That's either Command L on a Mac or Control L on a PC. And we see like the histograms right here is all spiked up. So let's bring our white over to there, but we're gonna bring the black. So we don't want uh, we don't want a whole lot of gray in there. So I want to see some of the rain. 
but not too much of it. And again, it's all by eye, a lot of concentration, or uh, experimentation, I should say. Okay, so we have this stuff here. It kind of looks like rain. But we also have, from, uh, from doing the motion blur, we're going to get this around the edges. But since we have that on another layer, we just hit Command-T or Control-T on a PC. We'll just bring that up. Just hold down your Option key and your Shift, and that'll like help you. It'll constrain it to that size, and uh, that way there you're also scaling it from, that, from this middle point right here. So you can see how that's done right here. Otherwise, if we're not holding that, then it'll just go like off to one side. But, you know, just bring it up like that. We could just get rid of it on all the edges all at once instead of having to mess around with it too much. And it's probably, let me see, it's a little sharp. So let's go up to our filter again. Let's do a blur and then Gaussian blur. I don't want to do it much. Uh, I think one pixel looks pretty good, so we'll just hit OK on that. And, you know, we don't want, like, crystal clear, like, rain, or it'll look like uh, shards of glass are, like, flying at your, at your, at your hero or heroine, whichever. Um, so let's do that. And then let's, you know what, let's go ahead and blur it, uh, get a little bit more motion on it. So go back to blur, and then motion blur again. And, you know, again, it's all kind of experimentation. Uh, so I think that looks pretty good there. And let's go ahead and bring in some more of those whites and darken those blacks a little bit more. I'm just playing around with it, with the settings, trying to get the, the right look. I think that looks pretty good for us. Um, let's go ahead and take that. Just select all, copy that layer. You know, if you want, you can go ahead and save it. Uh, save it as rain, um, save it into, you know, someplace where you can easily find it. And uh, so you can reuse that over and over again. But let's go back to our image here. And we'll just paste that on top. And the image I was working with was like a lot bigger image. I think it was like 11 by 17. So it's going to be used for prints at conventions. Um, but we that's okay. Because the it's not like crisp art, artwork or anything like that. The rain is going to be blurred already. So let's go ahead and just scale this up to cover the whole canvas here. I'm just go ahead and enter. And let's see what we'll do now. So we learn from messing around with our uh, our layer settings here. We can set that on screen. All the black will disappear, and we have the white left. So I think that looks pretty good. What we can do also. And I did have this uh, this alpha channel set up just for the background right here before. We'll set up a couple different ones, and it'll help add more depth to the piece. So let's go ahead and make a selection here. And we'll go out to our rain, and we'll add that, uh, that layer mask. So now all this rain here is just falling behind him. And we can drop that opacity down a little bit. Let's say like 50%. And now we can add another one. Let's just go ahead and paste that since it's still saved to our clipboard. And we'll just scale this guy up again. You know, maybe we'll scale it a little bit more so that way there the, the rain isn't exactly the same as it was. It's not it's not gonna be like in the exact same spots or anything like that. Well it'll be different. Uh go back to screen. Now we have some rain falling on top of him as well. Let me go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. And also what this is going to do is kind of add, like, you know, rain falling in other directions as well. You know, like maybe there's like a, a gust of wind. You know, we can kind of skew it a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of perspective to it if we want to. Let's see how this looks after that's done. So we have rain falling in back of them, but then also in front of them. And let's we go a little bit. A little bit more. Let's go 30%. So we have like some brighter rain, then some rain faded a little bit more back. And that looks pretty good right there. And uh, to help top it off, what will help sell it even more. Actually, let me like the foreground. Let me brighten that rain up a little bit more. And if there's too much in certain areas, what you can do is just go ahead and add a layer mask. Hit D so you have your default colors going. And then with your their airbrush tool. Oops, let me get a brush going. Is this a soft brush, I think? Should do nicely. Oops, that's a cloud brush. 
increase the size a little bit more and we can just gonna go in you know and get rid of some of this some of this stuff if, if you know in certain areas if we feel it's too much so uh, you know it's all up to you you know this way here you have full full control over the environment and if you want from the last tutorial you can throw in like your lightning bolts and have uh, you know some of the uh, uh, light going on on the clouds and everything too but uh, yeah, I think this looks that's 30% why is this one at 30% let's put that up at I think I had it in the, on my brush all right so yeah now we can kind of see some of that was that a quick mask Oh, there it goes. I always do that. I don't know why. Let me see what's going on. That should be good. Oh, picked red. Weird. All right, so we can kind of go in some areas and tone it down. Maybe like these areas in here where he's more hunched over. You know, we wouldn't see the rain as much. Maybe like underneath his legs here. You know, underneath him. Definitely not in, underneath his hand right here. Because it's gonna be that's gonna be blocking the rain, right? All right, so that looks pretty good. Another way we can just go ahead and, and top it off, we'll just put another layer on top of it. And I'll just get a, let's see, just a hard edge brush. And you can see the, the settings, the hardest is all the way at 100%. The spacing is all the way down at 1%. And we'll just turn on our shape dynamics. And we'll just kind of go in with a, increase the size a little bit. It's like with the white. You know, we just get little splashes here and there. So you can see how that, uh, that's kind of working out here. You know, whether it's just going to show, you know, there's actually the rain is hitting this guy. Don't want to go overboard and like follow his whole arm. You know, unless it's really raining that hard, then you probably wouldn't see a whole lot of the guy anyway. But, you know, just kind of doing it for environmental effect. You know, putting him in this environment and showing that the rain, you know, he's interacting with the rain or the rain's interacting with him. So, you know, anywhere like the rain would hit, we can go in there and just kind of paint a couple little lines. You know, it's that, it's that simple. You know, definitely on the ground here. You know, and then if you wanted to, you could even, um, let me lower the opacity a little bit on that. You know, you can kind of emphasize a little bit more of, of the raindrops has, you know, that are, that are hitting the ground, you know, in those spots or hitting him in those spots. Just kind of, just kind of show it off a little bit more, you know, but that's up to you. But uh, you know, you get the you get the gist of it. It's a whole lot of experimenting to get the rain just right. Um, each piece is going to be different, so you know, feel free to 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 mess around with it. But um, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.